Uh, you are aware that uh, as the joint security agencies, we continue uh, to mourn with all other Ugandans uh, the passing of uh, the late uh, uh, Right Honorable Jacob Bolanya. We continue to wait for the arrival of the body. Uh, and uh, good enough, the President's office is, is giving regular updates on when the body will arrive and the other barrier arrangements. But uh, on the side of security, we want to inform mourners, celebrants, and all members of the public that uh, security has been beefed at the home of the Right Honorable Jacob in Muyenga and uh, also in Omoro and all the other places where the funeral arrangements uh, are taking place. Uh, so we urge uh, all bereaved persons to remain calm and follow the updates uh, from the President's office. Uh, people may want to hear, but uh, uh, we have, uh, following the instructions of His Excellency the President, we opened uh, a case file at CID headquarters where all persons who were speculating about the cause of death uh, to the Right Honorable Jacob Oranya uh, will give us statements, but this will come after the burial. What we are doing right now is transcribing the footages, the videos. We are trolling all digital platforms and uh, getting evidence uh, from whoever was coming up with whatever speculation uh, over uh, the death of the Right Honorable. Of course, it is common practice that uh, uh, these days when a VIP dies, it appears it does not die of uh, natural causes. There has to be something. I think that should stop. Uh, because uh, the, the medical experts are there who indicate the cause of death. So why should you come with something contrary? So that is that, but uh, we shall listen to a number of people after the burial and uh, where necessary uh, also record uh, uh, their statements. Now for those of you who saw, there was a video that went viral yesterday where uh, a man was uh, allegedly tortured and uh, the way the video was captured, it was carefully uh, captured, but we want to come out today and uh, indicate to the public that this is a video which we've established uh, was uh, of a torture of an individual who was randomly selected. Uh, the territorial police so far at Kampala Metropolitan South and at Gaba are investigating those circumstances under which a plumber identified as uh, Njuba Bryan, a 40-year-old uh, resident of Lunguja, was invited for plumbing work uh, by uh, people who were now unknown to him. Uh, they gave him uh, direction uh, from Lunguja where he stays up to one of the guest houses in a gaba called uh, Lovely Guest House. Some of you may be knowing that guest house. But uh, they used, uh, what usually happens, they display, these are plumbers. It is common these days, you find people displaying their numbers for particular services. I'm a telephone repairer, uh, uh, call me on this number. I'm, um, a plumber, please call me on this number. I'm a technician, I'm a, an electric technician, call me on this number. So they took advantage of his number, which we have here, disguising as, uh, as clients and directed him to Gaba, where our lovely guest house is. And uh, when he reached the guest house, they asked him to proceed up to room number six. And uh, upon uh, reaching the, the room, they immediately pounced on him, grabbed, they stripped him naked, 
He was viciously tortured. Uh, his testicles were tied with ropes. The mouth gagged using stockings. And uh, uh, selected parts of his body were burnt using uh, hot uh, uh, melting plastic. And uh, thereafter, the mobile phone was, uh, was taken from him. And uh, the suspects left uh, thinking that he had probably died. Now, if you observed carefully, this was a horrific act which was carefully captured on, on camera, where the faces of the assailants were concealed. But the recorder, the recorder of the video only managed to display a yellow T-shirt written on NRM at the back uh, to probably reveal that the assailants subscribed to maybe the NRM as uh, a party. Uh, the victim clearly reveals that he had zero connection with the strangers and they completely chose him randomly following adverts of his contacts on various poles and walls within the division. Now this indicates that if it was not uh, uh, him, they would have uh, probably called somebody else uh, who, displays, who displays their contacts. So the suspects were not booked at the guest house, uh, which makes their act a premeditated one, maybe for political reasons or otherwise, we shall establish once the arrests are made. But for now, as a lesson to all other managers of hotels and guest houses, we've managed to arrest uh, two suspects. That is the owner of the hotel called uh, Mushabe Bryan, and also the lady who was uh, uh, attending the shift called uh, Namagembe Masi. Because sometimes they take some of the guidelines that are issued to them for granted. This is a person who could have lost his life due to the negligence of them, of, due to acts of negligence and the lack of vigilance at this guest house. So a serious manhunt for the suspects has already begun and we shall not rest until they are arrested and charged to court. Right now the victim is, uh, we rushed him to Mulago. He was in critical condition yesterday, but there are signs of improvement. Now the experience, of course, he went through is uh, uh, tragic and will haunt him and his family. And it is against that background that we also want to caution uh, all those uh, uh, business persons uh, who advertise their services, that uh, it is vulnerable when you move, when you conduct your, your services in isolation. This should be a lesson. It's important that you move with a partner, you move in groups. When uh, you suspect, uh, because now you are a plumber, they are leading you to a guest, uh, to, to a, a, a room number six. These are not the owners of the hotel. You also need to, you, to, to be a bit vigilant. So those who take their trades in isolation should take cognizance of such risks and start moving in pairs or groups uh, to avoid such uh, uh, incidents. Now we also want to... Uh, there was a, a terrible incident where uh, a mother uh, a mother and a baby were murdered uh, here in uh, uh, in Mukono. Uh, so far, we've managed to arrest uh, one suspect who happens to be the husband, a uh, one called Nabasa Dan. So our police in uh, Kampala Metropolitan Eastern Mukono uh, had uh, initially arrested four suspects in connection with. Uh, the mother of uh, a 22-year-old female together with uh, a newly born baby boy. At the scene, uh, we managed to uh, recover the body. Uh, it was half naked and uh, there were signs of torture and so on. So we managed to carry out to very 
uh, thorough evidence and got some leads which indicated to us that this victim uh, called Nakamogara Shida was staying in Masaka with the son and uh, the son called Gumiki Rizadan uh, less than one year. So the husband, uh, Nabasadan, was not uh, providing for the family, so he invited them to come to Kampala. Uh, this is uh, a man who is uh, a self-employed, uh, 35 year old in, uh, in Mukono. Uh, so when he failed to provide for the family, uh, because he had abandoned them in the house for almost uh, a week without uh, supporting them, and this is a woman who was new in Kampala, so he ended up murdering uh, the mother to his child uh, together with the baby. Uh, these are very uh, grave uh, incidents that we always want to bring out and show the public what is happening. So we've had him arrested after we tracked him and fi found him hiding in Chiwanga village. Before murdering the, this uh, victim and uh, the baby, he assaulted them seriously and dragged her on the road for a very good distance. So these are very grave incidents of domestic violence. I don't see the reason why he called uh, this victim and the baby to Kampala, yet he knew he was not able to provide for them. So uh, in a separate development also, we, there was a second murder still again in Mukono of uh, uh, Ewan Nakakawa Christine, 28-year-old uh, uh, businesswoman of Jogozon. Uh, this was in Goma in Mukono. The victim had left uh, her home on the 24th at around 7 p.m. to go and buy uh, soya beans for her business at the trading center, but she didn't return home. So the following morning, uh, police responded uh, to, a, uh, to a disturbance call and we found her body with stab wounds uh, within the vicinity of her home. Her phone had been robbed. As a result, we introduced the police canine dog, which led us to the home of Vutele Nelson, uh, one of the casual workers uh, in Jogo Zone. And uh, we managed to recover uh, some of the ropes which had been used in strangling her and also a knife which was used in uh, stabbing her on the right side of, uh, of the head. So it's very painful to lose uh, lives of vulnerable persons, especially women and children in such a manner. Our CLOs are in uh, Mokono, that is Jogo and Seta, and are trying to reassure the public and uh, encourage them to always report to the police where they are, where they are concerned. So these ones are going to be charged with murder. Now, uh, you remember there was an attack on uh, Nalia SS, that is Lugazi, where the two uh, uh, security guards uh, were murdered. Now, we managed to register a similar incident, which has uh, made us come out strongly to urge schools, especially secondary schools, to come up with safer working environments. Because it seems now people scale most of these uh, uh, fences, wall fences of schools with ease, and then they pounce on the, on, the board, on the watchmen and murder them. We had an incident which happened at St. Uh, Joseph SS. Uh, this was at, uh, uh, which is found in Chawa Ambago village, Nachisunga sub-county, still in Mokono and uh, we have a group of five thugs attacked two local guards at the school. That was on the 27th at around uh, 2 a.m. These were armed with the uh, pangas. Upon entering the premises, they rounded up uh, three students who were doing their prep, and uh, uh, one of them was in senior two, senior four, and another one in senior six, so they tied them up. They also, uh, arrested the watchmen, which means they were not alert. And uh, they also tied them 
But what is surprising is they left the students and went on to murder these two watchmen. One of the watchmen identified as Kanyole Patrick was a 50-year-old local guard. And uh, for him, he was dragged uh, towards the school play, uh, playground. They, ga they tied him with a sisal rope and, uh, and uh, strangled him to death. He also had a, a deep cut on the forehead, uh, which could have been out of uh, a sharp object like a panga. Now, the body of the colleague, uh, Hugh Fred, was found inside the sentry box. Hugh was aged 24 years. Uh, for him, they took him to the sentry box. Uh, that is near the main gate. They cut him and also strangled him to death. So the thugs, after killing them, went and broke into the offices of the head teacher and the basa. An unspecified amount of items were stolen, including money. And they also dismantled the CCTV uh, camera. However, we've uh, managed to recover exhibits of evidential value. Uh, our task teams from uh, crime intelligence and CID headquarters have been dispatched to uh, Mukono to try and get to the bottom of this incident. But this one shows that uh, our schools are not, are not investing enough in security. These two security guards had, uh, uh, each of them had a baton. And yet uh, some of the threats that face these schools are of people who are, who are armed with pangas, some of them could even have guns. So you find that uh, uh, the weapons don't match. So we call upon schools, especially those that have a boarding section, to invest more in security and have a number of guards. Uh, this, uh, this is not a random act anymore because it could be an act which is organized. It happened in Naria, they killed the security guards. Here again, the even after subduing them, they went on to murder them. So there are questions there uh, that we shall need to uh, establish.